Well, what is a rhizosphere? I'm going to take you down to the root system of a plant, and this is right at the tip of that root system. And the picture on the right there, the little insert, represents a plant root. And the story I'm going to tell you about applies to all plants that have roots. So trees and shrubs, perennials, annuals, doesn't matter if it's growing roots, this story applies. So how do these roots grow? There's a special area at the tip of every root called the root cap. That's right at the bottom here. These are special cells and their job is to multiply. The root grows by making more cells and basically creating a long chain of cells. And as it makes more cells, the root gets longer and longer. But in that process, it has to burrow through the soil. And a lot of the outside cells get damaged and they're just sloughed off the root. So these are these white specks that you see. That's dead plant cells. A few inches back from the root tip are root hairs. You can see them as black line. A lot of people talk about the root as absorbing all the nutrients in water, but that's actually not what happened. Most of those are absorbed by the root hairs. They're a little bit back from the root tip. They don't live very long. So these root hairs are formed and they're around for about three weeks and then they die off. And as they die off, there's more plant material around this root. So what this root is actually doing is creating a kind of compost pile around itself. We got dead cells at the bottom. We have dead root hairs that are dying off. We have lots of organic matter around here. That's a compost pile. The other thing this plant root does is it creates something called exudates. The root expels chemicals. It squeezes out chemicals in the soil around itself. And it turns out that some of these plants are taking about 30% of the chemicals they make in the upper part, in the leaves and stems and so on, and they transport down to the root and they squeeze it out as exudates. All kinds of different molecules. This doesn't sound like a good idea for a plant. I mean, it goes through all the effort and energy of creating these things and then it just squeeze it into the soil. There's got to be a purpose for this. And there is. All this organic matter attracts the microbes and they come and they live right next to this root. So the root is creating an environment that works for it. It likes to have these microbes around. Because remember what microbes do is they chew up all this organic matter, but then they die and they release nutrients. The microbes are bringing the nutrients to the root and releasing them so the roots can absorb it, which makes it easier for the root. It doesn't have to go out and get its food. The microbes, in effect, they're bringing it to the plant. On this slide, we're showing roots. Those are the large, kind of yellowish-white things. There's two of them. And then fungi filaments, which are the fine hairs. And there's an interesting association between fungi and roots. And they actually join together into a symbiotic relationship. The fungi actually drill into the roots and create an attachment and the two live together. You know, you might have heard the term mycorrhizal fungi. It turns out that about 80% of the plants on earth have this association. Why do this? Well, fungi don't have any leaves. They don't have any green stuff. They can't make their own food. They have to get all of their carbon, all of their energy from other things. And it just happens that plants have lots of sugar, lots of carbohydrates that the fungi need. But the fungi can provide things like phosphate and water to the root. So instead of the root growing out and covering wide areas of soil, it actually lets the fungi do it for it. So the fungi, and these things can be yards long, are going out, collecting nutrients and water, bringing it back, giving it to the plant, and the plant says, well, here's some sugars in exchange. Both of them are very happy. But what I find most interesting here is that the plant decides if and when it makes this association. So one of the exodates the plant creates attracts that fungi. And the fungi will only attach itself to the root once that chemical is present. So the roots, in effect, are saying, hey, I want to date you. Here's the exodate that tells you I'm interested in you. Come and attach. Let's have an association. 
Well, if you have a party with microbes, sooner or later some bad guys show up. Here we got a couple of purple bad guys. And these microbes want to eat plant roots. They can harm those roots. So what stops them from growing? I mean, this seems like a perfect environment for microbes. Why don't they grow? Well, it turns out that these exudates are specific for the microbes they want. So only certain microbes are happy living around that plant root. And some of those microbes actually attack the bad microbes. I mean, microbes are constantly warring with each other. They're constantly eating each other. And so the good microbes around this root are keeping the bad ones away and keeping the plant safe. The plant also conditions the pH of this soil. So it actually squeezes out some hydrogen ions. And hydrogen ions make the soil acidic. You may be familiar with the fact that plants grow best at a pH of about 6 to 6.5. And the reason that's the ideal pH is that at that pH, they have the easiest time to find their nutrients. When the pH goes higher to something above 7, a lot of those nutrients get stuck very tightly to soil particles and plants have trouble getting to them. But plants go really well in alkaline soil, at least most of them do. I mean, there are exceptions, so things like rhododendrons and blueberries don't grow in alkaline soil, but most things do. And my soil here is about a 7.4 and I can grow just about everything. But on paper, they shouldn't be that happy. They should have trouble growing here. The reason is that these plant roots are actually making the soil around the root, that rhizosphere area, more acidic. And the pH around the root is actually two pH units less. So the soil might be 7.4, but the pH around this root is going to be 5.5 to 6, which is like perfect for plant growth. So the plants are conditioning the pH around the root. To sum all this up, what plants are doing, they're creating an environment of organisms around themselves. The population around that root can be thousands of times higher than a few centimeters away from the root. This rhizosphere that we've been talking about is only a couple millimeters thick. So we have this high population of microbes. We have a high amount of organic matter. We have microbes that are living and dying and killing each other. All of that creates a lot of organic matter. That organic matter is decomposing and releasing nutrients. So in effect, the root is feeding itself by encouraging all these microbes to come around. What it's done is really created a compost pile, a whole bunch of compost right around that root. And that's one of the big secrets to good soil.